what's keeping Claire. Relax. You'd better enjoy your last moments as a bachelor. <laughs> Who are those people over there? Oh, friends of hers, I think, from that newspaper she worked on. I wish she'd hurry up. I'd like to get the gang back to the newspaper. Well, that's Claire for you, even late at her own wedding. You know, I really hate the lizard. What do you mean? Well, I speak now as her editor. Not as a disappointed suitor. Claire'd never make a newspaper woman, and you know it. Oh, I don't know. She dug up more hot social stuff than anyone the Tribune had had before. That takes talent. Personality hack, my boy, not talent. All right, so I appreciated her personality. You appreciated it. I was the one that brought her to your attention when she was only an $18 a week steno from a hick town. Remember? Very touching, Al. You can put that in your memoirs. She's marrying Hanneman now. Listen to the frustrated lovers. You know, if either of you guys had made furnaces instead of small talk, you might be in Hanneman's shoes now. Have one of mine. We do have memory, don't we, Les? Hanneman, wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? I will. Claire Cummings, wilt thou have this man to be thy wedded husband, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? I will. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. to a few of the gang. All right, hurry. Thank you. Thank you. Guess who? Why did you come out here? Because I love you. Because you love me. Claire, you... You're crazy. Don't you know what those words meant in there? <laughs> Let no man put asunder. No one can put us asunder less, you and me. Oh, I never could figure you out. Except that... Well, you make everything add up to spell Claire, don't you? Now, darling... You're even getting a sadistic kick out of having me at your wedding. Me and the others. But there are no others. Only you. I'll think about you on my honeymoon. I'll write you. Miss me, Les. I know you will be pardon. very happy. I beg your pardon. Thank you. I'm ready with my cameras, Mr. Hanneman. I've been looking for Mrs. Hanneman. You haven't seen her, have you? I believe you'll find her on the terrace. Carl, why aren't you entertaining the guests? I've been waiting for you, my dear. I was detained. On the terrace? Don't you think you were being a little affectionate for a newly married woman? Darling, you're a great big old suspicious bear. That was only Les Burns. And? It was nothing. Just a friendly goodbye kiss. Les did so much to help me with my newspaper career. Why, he's like a brother. You're the only man for me, darling. Ever. They're waiting for us. Shall we cut the cake?
Wow. How much did he pay? Ten eighty. Ten eighty for two. That's not bad. I win five hundred and forty dollars. Claire, you mean to say you bet a hundred dollars on that horse to win? Of course. In these places, you have to spend money to make money. You see now. I'll put five hundred dollars in the second race. High heels. Come on. Wait, wait. That's being foolish. You're only out a hundred dollars if I do lose. It isn't the money. It's the principle of the thing. Principle. Carl, I don't understand you. With all you have. I've worked hard for what I have. Oh, I don't mean to be a tight wad. A little bet for fun is all right. But I have too much respect for money to throw it away on horses. Of course you're right. It was foolish of me to bet so much. Forgive me. Of course. Now, excuse me, I want to go cash these in. Oh, we went to the barber shop. Who are you writing to? June Taylor. You remember. Les Byrne's secretary. She was at our wedding. Do you want to read some of the awful things I said about you? <laughs> it's hard for me to believe that I'm so lucky as to have a woman like you in love with me. It's true, darling. Every word of it. I'm sorry, Claire. My darling Les, to June, eh? Things are beginning to make sense now. Carl, darling. So that was a goodbye kiss you gave Les Burns. Well. Well, what do you want me to say? Nothing. There's nothing you can say, I guess. I'm only glad I found out about it now. Carl, what are you going to do? I'm going back to San Francisco. We're through. Carl. I don't care what you do. But I have no money, thanks to your great generosity. That's enough for the week's hotel bill. You've got that money from the racetrack. Live on that. You'll not get another cent from me. Oh, no. I wouldn't be too sure of that. I'm your wife, Carl. There are community property laws in this state. It won't be that easy. It'll be very easy when I show this letter to the judge. And I'm starting divorce proceedings in the morning. Oh, Carl, darling, let's talk this thing over. It's so silly. Get out of my way before I forget myself. Please connect me with the house physician. Hello, Dr. Hastings. This is Mrs. Carl Hanneman, Bungalow 9. Could you please leave a prescription for some sleeping tablets for me at the drugstore? I'll be needing them right away. I'm turning in early. No. No, that won't be necessary. I'm going out for a bite to eat, and I'll pick them up later. Thank you.
I want a new set of plugs in 42. Okay, Blackie. Are you Mr. Tallon? Yeah. I must reach San Francisco by tonight. I want to be back by morning. Can you make it? I can make it up and back if... Uh, if what? This weather holds out and my fee is big enough. How much will it cost? Four hundred bucks. Why five? I said four. I know you said four. I never made this trip. You never saw me. Understand? Sure. Sure, I don't even want to know your name. I'm glad we understand each other. Perfectly. Now, if you wait over there, we'll be ready to leave in a few minutes. Hey, Jake, roll out 41 and let's warm it up. Right. service, please. Hello, this is Mrs. Carl Hanneman, Bungalow 9. Would you please send a waiter over with the menu? Thank you. Good morning, Victor. Let me see. I think I'll take some orange juice and uh, toast, coffee. That'll be all. How was the ball game? There was no ball game. It was a track meet. Well done, nothing. This all the mail today? Yes. By the way, I, I meant to ask you sooner, but I'm going to have a little dinner party tonight for a couple I know. You're invited if you're not doing anything. Well, sure, what's the occasion? They're going to be married soon. They're awfully nice kids. Uh, married? And the trouble will really start. <laughs> Mr. Burns' office. Long distance calling. It's Mrs. Hanneman. Hello, Claire. Hello, Les. I'm so glad I caught you at the office. How's the honeymoon? It was interrupted. Carl had to go back east yesterday. Business, he said. He wanted me to stay over, wait for him here. But I'm not. I'm coming back to San Francisco tonight. You think that's sensible? Of course not. But I'll see you again. Look, I want you to arrange a plane ticket for me. Reservations are so hard to get at this end, it'll be easy for you. All right, Claire, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Tomorrow won't do. I'm coming home tonight. Okay, I'll wire you back on the time. I knew you would help me. Be sure to meet me at the airport. I can hardly wait to see you. Goodbye, Les. Goodbye, Claire. Uh, June, uh, get a hold of Hack Doyle. Have him get me a reservation on the 8 o'clock plane out of Los Angeles tonight. It's for Mrs. Hanneman. Are you planning to meet her? Yeah. Oh, I guess I'll have to cancel our dinner party tonight. It doesn't matter. Apparently, Claire can get anything she wants out of anybody at any time. Can't she? I never thought I'd be back with you so soon, darling. It's wonderful. It's crazy. Then why did you meet me? I don't know. I do. Because you still love me, don't you, Les? I'll get over it. I hope Carl stays in New York for a long, long time. That well, seems a bit odd he didn't arrange his business affairs so they wouldn't interfere with his honeymoon. Yes, I thought so, too. 
You're certain you and Hanneman didn't have some trouble? What kind of trouble could we possibly have had? Quarrel of some kind, perhaps over us. Now, wouldn't that be ridiculous? Giving him some reason to doubt me just so soon after we're married? What do you think you're doing now? You don't feel sorry for Carl, do you? No, no, I don't. But I should. Look, let's forget all about him, for a few days anyway. Take me home, I'll change, and you can take me out to supper. Claire, I'd, I'd rather not go to the house. But I, I must freshen up, darling. I really must. You want me to be beautiful, don't you? Just for you? You are beautiful. See, there's nobody home. Wait in there, darling. I'll be down in a minute. Come in. Oh, darling. Les, what is it? Stay here. Carl. I thought you said he'd gone to New York. That's what he told me. I don't understand it. Why should he do such a terrible thing? You probably know as much about that as anyone. It's going to be one of the first things the police ask you. You can't stay here, darling. I'll take you over to Hack Doyle's. Where's your telephone? Police headquarters, please. I thought of you and Hack right away, Mamie, and brought her over here. I hope you can put her up for tonight. Oh, of course. You can stay as long as you like, Claire. Thank you, Mimi. You're very kind. It's just too incredible. If you'd had any earthly reason, we were so happy. So very happy. And now there's... Oh, Hack, mm -hmm. Claire's going to stay with us for a few days. Good. Plenty of room. The police are over there now. Murdoch said he'd stop by here later. Sure it was suicide? Fairly sure. The man in Hanneman's position, a beautiful wife and all that money? I don't get it. I don't either. Oh, hello, Bill. Come on. How are you, Hank? Mm -hmm. Hello, Claire. Hello, Bill. Sorry this had to happen to you. Sit down, Captain. How about a cup of coffee? Thanks, Ms. Doyle. I won't annoy you for long, Claire. Just a few questions, routine. You know how it is. Of course. Les gave me most of the details over the phone. Your husband, by the way, has been dead for nearly 24 hours. Uh, how did it happen that Burns met you at the airport? He didn't happen to. I phoned him from Los Angeles. How come? Well, I was arriving late and alone. I knew Les would pick me up. Do you have any theory as to why your husband came to San Francisco after telling you he was going to New York? No. I didn't know anything about the business. The gun, of course, was Hanneman's. We checked the serial number. Funny there are no powder burns on the coat. Bill, a suicide doesn't always press a gun against his body. In that case... There would be no powder burns, I know. Do you know of any reason why your husband should have taken his life? No, I don't. Anything wrong with his health? Not that I know of, but that could have been the reason. Had you quarreled? Oh, no. No, we never quarreled. Believe me, throughout every minute of our married life, we were supremely happy. The entire week, huh? Well, that's all for now. I may want to talk with you again later. Where will you be? Right here with us. Thanks. Now, uh, Bill. Yeah? You uh, found fingerprints on the gun, of course. I mean, uh, Hanneman's prints. Uh-uh. Clean as a whistle. Certainly, Mr. Burns, that's the position you and Mrs. Hanneman found her husband. That's right. One more question, Mr. Burns. Your testimony at the coroner's inquest said you touched nothing. That's true. 
Then how did you know the man was dead without feeling his pulse or heart? Mr. Chalmers, I've been around enough to know a dead man when I see one, especially after 20-some-odd hours. You uh, assumed that Mr. Hanneman committed suicide. Why? Well, everything points to suicide. Not in my assumption, Mr. Burns. Mrs. Hanneman, you say you saw your husband alive on Monday afternoon, and then the following night, which was Tuesday, you saw him again. Yes, but he was dead. I've told you everything. You don't need a weather vane to see which way this wind is blowing. Was it customary for the servants to uh, take a vacation whenever Mr. Hanneman left on a trip and leave the house empty? Well, I, I don't really know. I, I didn't give orders to the servants. Carl, Mr. Hanneman ran the house. I hadn't moved in yet. I see that uh, you also assumed that this was a suicide. <laughs> Naturally, it couldn't have been anything else. That's what Mr. Burns said. According to the Police Scientific Detection Laboratory, the pistol found near the body was the one used in the death of your husband. But they found no powder burns on the clothes of Mr. Hanneman, nor fingerprints of any description on the gun. Furthermore, it was brought out that Mr. Hanneman couldn't have fired the gun because in making certain tests of his hand for traces of powder marks, none was found. Just what are you driving at? Simply this. Carl Hanneman was murdered. But unfortunately, I haven't enough evidence to hold either of you. You were out of town, and your alibi was proven. You're free to go. But let me give you a tip. I'm not buying any suicide theory, so the case will remain open. See you later, Ed. So long, Hector. Good morning, Les. Just the guy I want to see. Yeah, about what? Oh, I've been assigned to do the follow-up on the Hanneman case. Oh, how'd you draw that? Oh, I asked for it. It'd be a dull job because there isn't going to be any follow-up. <laughs> Just an ordinary suicide. Are you kidding? I never smelled an odor of fish so strong in my life. No fingerprints on the gun, and you call it suicide. So what? What makes you so sure? Can you give me a good reason for Hanneman killing himself? No, I can't. Perhaps he thought he had a good reason. And perhaps he didn't. So meanwhile, if I can dig up a plausible motive... Who I... asked you to dig up a motive? Plausible or otherwise? I said, if I can dig up a motive, I'm willing to accept suicide. But if I can't, <laughs> then it'll have to be murder. Still carrying the torch for Claire, huh, Al? Not anymore. But somebody sure fixed it in a hurry for you to get Claire again. That's a nasty crack. So meanwhile, chum, walk a straight line. Or you'll have people thinking you took a shot at Hanneman. You've got a lot of work to do, Al. You're so right, boss. Sorry, Hack. How's Claire taking it this morning? I don't know. She's still asleep when I left. Les, I'm worried about this deal. Police aren't buying any suicide theory. Is that why you put Herrick on the story? Maybe. He might dig up a suicide motive. What's your slant? Well, uh... Hanneman killed himself. Nice try, Hack. You're about as subtle as a punch in the nose. You think Hanneman was murdered, don't you? Maybe I'm protecting someone. It's possible. But I'd like to protect someone if it isn't suicide. Like who? Like you. Who had a better reason? Hanneman's death meant that you'd get Claire back and the million-odd bucks. That makes sense to a lot of imaginative characters around this town. I don't believe it for one second. But I still think it's safer to sell the suicide theory if Harry can dig it up. Thanks, Hack. But I didn't do it. Yeah. Send him in. Well, they're on the job. Hello, Batson. What's on your mind? The DA would like to see you gents in the morning. Says it's important. About 10 o'clock. What do you want us for? Don't you know? Uh, Mrs. Hanneman's already got her invitation. See you tomorrow.
Eric really revels in pouring it on. Well, it's news. Nobody's been hurt yet. By person or persons unknown. Could have been worse. The DA certainly tried hard to tag it on somebody. Tell me, Hack, do you think that, well, that Claire could have shot her husband in some way? No. She was in Los Angeles the night he was killed. The DA couldn't shake that, and... Good morning, everybody. I hope I'm interrupting something important. Hello, darling. You look tired. Hello, Hack, dear. Good morning, Claire. It's a pleasant surprise. What can I do for you? I uh, came to get my job back. Starting when? No. Well, after all that's happened, don't you think you should have a little rest? Rest? Why, working will be the best thing in the world for me. It'll keep me from thinking too much about poor Carl. After all, I must carry on. My life is still ahead of me. What's the real reason? Well, I do need a little cash. I have the house and my clothes, but I just won't be able to live on the widow's compensation the court will allow me. You wouldn't want me to have to sell my clothes in order to eat, would you? Oh, no. After all, I've, I've made other arrangements about your column. Beth Warnock's taking it over. You are still the boss, Hack. Les, darling, wait outside for me. I'll be out as soon as I've had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Hack. I know. You might as well say yes, Hack. I've had these heart-to-heart -heart talks. You will let me stay, won't you, Hack? Yes, but I was hoping you wouldn't ask it. You are a darling. Listen, Claire. You stick to the job and no playing around. There's enough trouble here now without you adding to it. I don't know why you talk like that. I'm serious about it, Hack. I'll work hard. For your sake, I hope you do. You are a dear. See you later. Well, see you later, Al. All right. Hope you're your friends. Yeah, <laughs> old friends. Uh, two martinis, please. Chicken salad? Fine. Chicken salad for two. And coffee. Les, do you know a good lawyer? Yeah, why? Well, I need one to handle Carl's estate. What's the matter with Hanneman's regular lawyer? Oh, he's an old fuddy-duddy. I want someone whom I can trust to take care of my interests. Well, you might try uh, Lawrence Carson. He specializes in probate work. Carson? Good. I'll call him tomorrow. Do I know that man over there? You should. It's Stanley Mason. Our paper's backing him for Congress. Of course. Why, the pictures on his campaign posters don't do him justice. You know, I never configured that guy. Every time I see him, he's with a different girl. So? Oh, we'll have four Manhattans. Make them half French and half Italian vermouth. We'll order later. I'll look after them personally, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Stanley. Isn't that that Hanneman woman over there? Yes, she's very attractive, isn't she? Well, she likes the type. Why wouldn't he be a good man to handle the estate? No, no, no. He's too tied up with his election campaign. What are his chances, Les? I'm going to Washington. Pretty good. Why? That makes him important. I've got to have someone with influence. He looks like the kind of a man who could get things done quickly. Capable enough, I suppose. Probably make a good representative. Personally, I just don't go for it. I want you to introduce me to him. You can do better. Oh, darling, don't be stubborn. I want to meet him. When you want something, you want it right now, don't you? You know what I really want, Les. I know. A fine old name like Hanneman, carload of dollars, social position, the tops. You're forgetting the most important thing. Am I? 
You see, that's just the frame. You're the picture in that frame. What's that about a frame? Sergeant Benson, won't you join us? No, but Burns here can join me. Been looking all over for you. The captain wants to have a little chat. Now. What is this, a pinch? No, just an interview. It won't take long. It's too bad you couldn't have found me at 10 o'clock this morning. I was in a dentist's chair. I'm sorry, Claire. It's all right, darling. I'll wait for you here. Violet. Hello, Al. Don't tell me they finally grabbed Les for murder. Wouldn't you like to hear me say yes? Yes. <laughs> well, don't stop the presses. Yet. You're the most composed dream I ever saw. I don't believe you give a hoot whether this case ever gets solved. Oh, but of course I do. Really. Say, Al, how well do you know Stanley Mason? <laughs> Quite well. I, I've planted some of his propaganda. You can do me a favor, a big favor. I want to meet him. Might be a good idea. I remember I once introduced you to a fellow by the name of Les Burns. Promptly lost you. Excuse me. Stan. How are you? Well, hello, Al. See, I have a young lady over here I'd like to meet you. Just take a minute. Well, all right. Excuse me? Excuse me. Claire, this is Stanley Mason. Mrs. Hanneman. I'm so glad to meet you, Mr. Mason. How do you do, Mrs. Hanneman? Won't you sit down? Sorry, I can stay but a minute. I know you think me rather forward, but being an attorney, you can understand my predicament. I'm desperately in need of someone to administer my late husband's affairs. I thought perhaps you could help me. Well, I hadn't intended on taking out any more work this summer. My campaign requires so much attention. However, uh, supposing you come to my office at, say, uh, 4 o'clock, we can at least talk it over. Oh, thank you. I would appreciate it. Here's the address. So, until then. Oh. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Don't mention it. I found him, Cap. Right where I expected. With the grief-stricken widow. Only if she's grief-stricken, I'd it. skip it. Last my boy. Have a seat. Last time it was hello, Burns. Today it's less, my boy. What do you want? You know, I just wanted to chin a bit, will you? Oh? I didn't know I was that interesting. Mm. You live out in the Hanneman neighborhood, don't you? No, and you know it. But you go out to that neighborhood quite often, don't you? Yeah, so what? To visit friends. Oh, sure, that's right. There's Hack Doyle and his wife, June Taylor. Say, there's a clever little girl, huh? <laughs> Your secretary, huh? Since when have you become so interested in my secretary? I thought you were a happily married man. <laughs> uh, weren't you out in that neighborhood the night Hanneman was shot? Monday night? Uh, no, I wasn't. I played gin rummy with the boys in the press room. Went home to bed about 10 o'clock. He read the testimony, did the checking. Come on, Murdoch, what's on your so-called mind? Well, funny, we can't find any record of where you were between 10 o'clock and 8 the next morning when you had breakfast at Drake's Coffee Shop. Nobody saw you around your apartment house. Nothing so strange about that. People in my neighborhood mind their own business. I spent the night sleeping. You got an edgy temper today, Les. Aren't worried about anything, are you? I'm annoyed. Until you and the DA get this thing settled, nobody will get any rest. We may have the answer quicker than you think. The police expect to apprehend the criminal within 24 hours. Shall I quote that? You can write out the gags, Burns. You've been crazy about Claire for a long time, haven't you? That's right. You thought she was going to marry you. Then she married Hanneman. 
That must have been quite a jolt. I won't deny that either. So you must have been pretty sore at Hanneman for beating your time. All right, I suppose I was. <laughs> you know, Burns, you've given out with all the motives a man needs for killing another. You don't need motives, Murdoch. You need evidence. Evidence? <laughs> you just told me that you weren't near the Hanneman home last Monday night. I wasn't. And how do you account for your cigarette case being found on the Hanneman garden, still wet from Monday night's rain? I don't have to account for anything. But to throw cold water on your master mind, I tossed that away right after the wedding. Anything else you want to know? No, that's enough. Next time, be more careful when you talk to the captain. Listen, Mr. Benson. I've heard the captain's feelings or yours arrest me. And I can sue and you'll be back writing tickets for jaywalkers. You rent that stool by the month? Well, let's do it. Where's Claire? Oh, Claire isn't here. She had an appointment. Did she go back to the paper? Uh-uh. No, about this time, she should be walking into the inner sanctum with that courageous and fearless champion of the people's rights, that distinguished candidate for the Congress of these United States, uh, Mr. Stanley Mason. You sound like you're on Stanley's payroll. Mm -hmm. I introduced them. You seem to have a talent for that sort of thing. Thank you. I believe that's all the information I need, Mrs. Hanneman. I can't possibly find words to express my gratitude and your consenting to help me. Oh, believe me, it's a pleasure. A little pressure in the right places should settle the matter quickly for you. Thank you again, and good luck in the election. Oh, thank you. I suppose you'll be leaving for Washington immediately if you do win. Yes, if I win. You will. I know you will. Well, I really must be going. Well, can't I drop you off somewhere? I'm sorry. Not this evening. Mr. Burns is taking me home. He's the gentleman you saw me with today. I'll call you tomorrow. Perhaps we can have dinner and talk some more about your problems. Splendid. Goodbye. Look, Claire, don't you think you ought to stay over at Hack Doyle's a little longer? It might be unpleasant. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Come on. Oh, Robert. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Hanneman. Uh, we weren't expecting you home. We've made no arrangements for dinner. I've had dinner. Please take my bags to my room, and you and Christine take the evening off. I shan't be needing you. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Hanneman, uh, I just wish to say on behalf of Christine and myself that we're pleased that you're home, and we'll do everything we can to make you happy. Why, thank you, Robert. Well, come in, darling. You aren't afraid of Carl's ghost, are you? You'll never be happy here, Claire. Nonsense. I've done a little refurnishing. A little to help a little. Les, what did Murdoch want with you? You had an idea I might have paid a visit here Monday night. But you didn't, did you? Of course not. It also seems I had a motive to kill Carl. But of course you did, if you were that kind of a person. Murdoch's only fishing. Well, he knows I've been in love with you for a long time. I told him. You told him? Why not? It's true. You want them to keep working on you, so they'll stay away from me. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. I said I'd stand by. And you have. And I love you the more for it. You know, I do love you, don't you, darling? I think you do, Claire. In a peculiar, mixed up sort of way. I never should have married Carl. I didn't really love him, but he offered so much. Things I never had. But that's all over now. Oh, it's not over. And it won't be until they find his murder. They will. And there'll be nothing to keep us apart again. Ever. If I could only sell myself on that. 
You've got to, Les. You've got to. That little tidbit straight from the horse's mouth brings us to the 3 0 mark for today. See you around about this time tomorrow, Les Burns. You're pretty sharp today. That's the best column you've done in two weeks. Thanks. If you say so, it must be all right. Hi, pal. Hello, Harry. Uh, hear about your girlfriend? They dragged her in this day, Anna. Murdoch and the DA gave her quite a going over. No use charging to the rescue, Les. Uh, Stanley Mason already beat you to it. What do they want with her, Al? Well, it seems they had a hunch Claire made a fast round trip into town the night her hubby joined his ancestors. It seems they thought her alibi about being in L.A. the whole time was the bunk. Oh, that's ridiculous. What is it? Well, you'd know more about it than anyone. Jones, put that through, please. Okay, Al. You're so much smarter than Murdoch. Spill it. Oh, I'm not saying I'm smarter. But I do know Claire better than he does. And I know you. Meaning what? Claire never lost any interest in you before, during, or after her marriage. Well, that doesn't prove it happened. With all that wampum at stake, this whole thing could have been planned weeks ago by both of you. I'm fed up with your dirty cracks. Now get out! Wait a minute! Look, Junior, one of these days I'm going to be too late and you're not going to have any teeth. Mm -hmm. You're so right, boss. What's wrong, Les? Nothing, forget it. It's the way you want it. If anybody wants me, I've gone for the day. Have one for me, too. Where's Mrs. Hanneman? I gotta see her. Is she in? Why, well, yes, but she's going out. This is important. What's the trouble, Les? Oh, I've been trying to find you all afternoon. You didn't get back to the paper. Where were you? I was with Stan. Uh, Mr. Mason. We were talking over the estate. Oh. Looks like you got some more talking to do. It's really only business, Les. Come in, but I can only see you for a moment. You've taken on quite a package tonight, haven't you, Les? Well, I've had a few drinks. Sitting over at Renard's. Been thinking things. Crazy things. About me? Yes, you. Murdoch and the DA asking you all those questions. It's nothing to be disturbed about. I'm not so sure. Why do you say that? Were you in this room Monday night? What? Why, you know I wasn't. I don't know anything. But I wouldn't lie to you. Have I ever, Les? Claire, there's only two people could have profited by Hanneman's death. I'm one of them. You're the other. Why, how dare you come in here accusing me? You only married Hanneman for this. You've admitted it a dozen times. But I didn't kill him. How can you even think it? I didn't kill him. I didn't say you did. But if you know anything, you've got to tell me. Were you in this room Monday night? No. You might have come in, seen someone. I've got to know. Stop shaking me. Then tell me the truth. Let go of me. I thought you were going to stand by me. Why, you're drunk. I'm only trying to help you and me. Huh. Help me. You're accusing me of murder. How do I know you didn't kill him? You were in town. Claire. I have as much right to accuse as you have. But I'm not accusing you. Get out of this house. I once said I couldn't figure you out. I can now. You're not a normal woman. You're not warm. You're cold, like ice. Yeah, like ice. Blonde ice. Get out of here.
it was... Hello, Mrs. Hanover. I don't believe I know you. Sure. Sure you do. Let me come in. We can talk better inside. In there. Now, what do you want? Well, I saw your picture in the paper, and I found out who you were. I figured we could make a deal. Deal? I was going to call on you last night, but uh, you, you had company, and I had to see you alone. What kind of a deal? Seems that plane ride last Monday night returned big dividends. I paid you to forget me. I thought I could trust you. Sure. Sure you can trust me. But it's hard to forget murder for any hundred bucks. Who are you, dirty ah, double? Ah, 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 I don't like that word. All right, we'll forget what happened to Hanneman. I'll go along with you on that suicide story. That is providing there's a little consideration of, let's say, uh, 50 grand. $50,000? Why, I don't have that kind of money. This estate's in probate. I won't receive a thing for months. I can wait. But in the meantime, I'll take this. I know a little man who'll lend me money on it. All right, all right. Just don't come near this house again. But I will keep in touch with you. Quick, out the terrace door. And don't forget, Mrs. Hanneman, I'm not kidding about that 50 G. I'll get it, Roberts. Yes, ma'am. Stanley, darling. Thank you. Well, he isn't at Bernard's either. Oh, I hope nothing's happened to him. He'll turn up when he runs down or runs out of dough for drinks. Say, uh, you write his column all by yourself? Somebody had to do it. I hope it's fit to print. It's good. Nice of you to cover for him, too. Do you really think he's all right? Sure, sure. I'll find him later. Don't worry about Les. He's probably getting more poison out of his system than he is into it. I hope. Hello. Oh, hello, June. Oh. See if you can give me another head, will you? This one's not going to do me much good. You certainly had a little trip for yourself. Oh, I guess so. What day is it? Tuesday. Holy mackerel. What happened to Sunday and Monday? I took care of them for you. Oh, you would. Who found me, Hack Doyle? No, Claire. Claire? Mm-hmm. You were trying to convince the doorman at the top of the mark to let you out on the roof. It was the only way to the moon. Oh, brother. The moon? Looks like I wanted more than a little trip. Here, drink this. It'll make you feel better. I guess I've been the horrible example. Huh? You no doubt thought you had a big reason for getting tight. I had to get away from something. Something wasn't good for me. Uh, have any luck? I don't know. I'm never going through this again, I can assure you of that. June. Well, I, I guess I'd better get back to the office. Well, thanks a lot for looking after me, June. Uh, I'll be down after a while, if I can make it. Don't hurry. I wonder which hangover you'll recover from first. I thought we were all washed up, Claire. Les, for everything I said the other night, I'm terribly sorry. I guess I was a little mixed up myself. Forgive me, darling. I must have been out of my mind to say such awful things to you. I realized the truth later. You were afraid for me because you loved me. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe it was. I just couldn't believe that. Look, let's forget all about it. We know there's nothing to worry about. There never was. We know that, don't we, Les? Sure, Claire. Sure. 
Here's to our new congressman. May your career be long and successful. Thank you, darling. Jeff, but aren't you both a bit early? I only wish I could be as sure of my future in psychiatry as you can be of your future in Washington. Doctor, you were analyzing me at dinner, the workings of my mind. Do go on, it's very interesting. I've never been psychoanalyzed before, and your deductions amaze me. Claire, I warn you, if Jeff continues, he'll have you convinced you're batty. <laughs> Simply because your father ran away with another woman and your mother was relegated to hard work. Stanley doesn't quite believe in the powers of psychoanalysis, Mrs. Hanneman. But if either of you could spend a day in my office listening to some of my patients, you'd see the logic of my deductions. Or any psychiatrist, for that matter. Oh, don't mind Stanley's cynicisms, Doctor. Yes, Robert? Telephone for Mr. Mason. Excuse me. Certainly. I was telling you at dinner that I believed that money, clothes, adulation, etc., was a necessity with you. That some people are impelled towards an objective without even consciously knowing why. Is there something criminal in my being ambitious? <laughs> why, no, criminal? Of course not. Unless your ambitions take a perverse form, then you'll stop at nothing, right or wrong, to get what you want. They say the female of the species is deadlier than the male. Go on, Doctor. Sorry to interrupt, darling. It was my campaign manager. He arranged a last-minute radio interview for tonight. I... I'll have to leave. Uh, you can drop me off downtown, Stanley. I'll get my coat. All right. Will you forgive me, darling? Of course, honey. I'm so proud of you. Oh, I almost forgot the good news. I had lunch with the DA this noon. It looks like Hanneman's murder is going to be filed away into crimes unsolved. It, uh, is there opinion that it must have been done by a burglar? Oh, I'm so glad, really. Now I'll be able to go with you to Washington with a clear conscience. Say, you haven't told any of your friends about our plans, have you? Oh, no, of course not. Good. We'll surprise them tomorrow night. Yes, we certainly will. Ready? Yes, thank you. Good night, Claire. Good night. Uh, Mrs. Hanneman, uh, please don't take my mental probing too seriously. You're a very charming hostess. So don't worry. I never worry. Good night. Good night. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Hanneman. That's all right, Roberts. I'll take it. Hello. Who? How dare you call me here? I had to. I'm in a jam. I need some dough, and you've got to help me. The estate isn't settled yet. I told you, I don't have any money. Don't give me that. You're a smart girl. If you haven't got it, you know where you can find it. I need at least a couple of grand now and tonight. Or else I go to the cops. I got nothing to lose. I have about 700 cash in my jewelry. All right, bring it along. Meet me at the end of the Old Valley Road. Be there in 20 minutes. Anybody follow you? No. Then stop being nervous. I'm not nervous. You are. All right, give me this stuff and let's see if I can use it. These look all right. I got into the bookies for a couple of grand. They're bad little men. And I've been stalling. Tonight they told me, pay off or else. They wouldn't kill you for $2,000. They'd kill for a lot less. That's why I had to put the bite on you. Thanks, Mrs. Hanneman. I wouldn't double-cross anybody. Not unless I had to. I wouldn't double-cross anybody either, Blackie. Unless I had to.
first returns have been received from the 12th precinct. Mason, 311, Jeffers, 282, and Allen, 91. That just about cinches it. If I can do that well in the 10th, I can carry them all. My gratitude, Joel. Without your paper in back of me, I wouldn't have had a chance. Think nothing of it, Mr. Mason? We're glad we backed the right man. Well, it looks like you're in, Mr. Mason. Congratulations. Seen Les and Clara yet tonight? No, I guess she's waiting to make her grand entrance. That's about a hundred times you've asked for them, huh? What gives? Uh, nothing. Mr. Doyle, hmm? looks like we have a new congressman. Yes, it does. I'm sure he's going to be a good one. I hope so. We backed him. Hello, Claire. Hi, Les. Hi, Heck. Oh, good evening, Claire. You look stunning, as usual. Thank you, Stanley. Oh, hello, Les. Thanks for being Claire for me. Oh, big night, huh? In third place is Jeffers with 162, Allen with 142, and Mason, 300 even. <laughs> That's how big it is. Come on, Claire, I want you to meet some folks. You'll find drinks in there. Look, Les, there's something on my mind. I want to tell you about it. Uh... You better have a drink first. Sure. Hi, folks. How's the brawl? Well, at least the liquor's good. Well, oh, Junie, aren't you a pretty thing tonight? Well, it's about time you noticed me. The trouble with you men is you always have ink in your eyes down at the office. <laughs> <laughs> have a fresh one? No, thank you. This will do. Last. Hmm? I'll talk to you for a minute. Excuse us. What gives? Uh, did you come with Claire tonight? No, no, I came with my Aunt Martha from Penobscot. No, I'm serious. You saw her come in with me. You better get her out of your system, but right now. What are you talking about? Things are fine with us now. She couldn't be sweeter. You should have seen her earlier, helping me get things ready for that little party up at my place tonight. How about a speech, Mr. Mason? We haven't had one. Come on, Stanley. Yeah, give us a speech. That's all I need. Now, wait a minute. Speech, all right. If you want a speech, you shall have it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you a very lovely young woman, better known to you as Claire Cummings. I am happy to announce that she's bestowed upon me the great honor of consenting to become my wife. This is a dirty, low-down trick. But I'm glad it's happened. Someday I'll tell you why. That was quite a speech you made, Stanley. Surprise, Jeffrey. Are uh, you going to congratulate us, Doctor? It's customary. Hate to take you away at this moment, Stanley, but there's something I must talk to you about. It's important. But of course, Jeffrey. Will you excuse us? I know you'll enjoy living in Washington. <laughs> when do you plan to have the wedding? like that, darling. And what are you doing here? I wanted to see you alone. Sure, not a husband in sight. Dead or alive. I didn't have a chance to explain. No one can put us asunder, less. You and me. It was more effective last time with wedding music, remember? Oh, you're cruel. I didn't mean to hurt you, and you are hurt, aren't you? That's how much you bother me now. Not a quiver. What about your heart? Claire Cummings, Hanneman Mason. If this keeps up, you won't be able to get your initials on your silverware. I can't help it, Les. I do love you, but you could never give me the things I must have. Money, importance. With me, they're a necessity. Oh, stop it, Claire. You're like a poison. Take a little bit and you're finished. But too much becomes an antidote. All right, darling. But if we've really come to the end... 
Stanley. Divine Burns, I'd like to say something to my fiance alone. Not at all, Mr. Mason. Not at all. Go right ahead. The congratulations are hardly over before I find you in the arms of your old sweetheart. That was a stupid remark. I had to say something to him, didn't I? So you didn't tell him earlier. You said you were going to. Well, I, I couldn't find the words. Is that why you're angry? Oh, darling, let's not quarrel. We can do that after we're married. There isn't going to be any marriage. What are you saying? I'm afraid we've made a mistake. You can't mean that. What will my friends think? I couldn't stand the humiliation. Oh, you'll get over it quickly enough, as quickly as you did your other marriage. Why are you talking this way? What did that phony doctor tell you? That's not important. We've made a mistake. Now, let's forget it, shall we? But you can't throw me over. I've looked forward. I've planned. You're taking me to Washington with you. Away from these people, these memories. I've got to go with you, Stanley. No, I'm sorry. It's final. You ought to see a doctor, Claire. A doctor like Jeff. I looked for you at the party after he talked to me. I merely wanted to ask you something. Doyle told me where I'd find you, but I didn't believe him either. But finding you here proves many things. You're not well, Claire. I'm all right. I didn't mean to crack up. At least we could have a farewell drink together. No hard feelings, really. Why don't you fix some for us? I must say, you're being regular about it. I did nothing. You killed him, Miss. I killed him? Don't you remember? You came in just a few minutes ago. You saw us talking. You looked funny. Crazy. You said you were going to kill Stanley because he stole me from you. So you picked up the knife and you... You stabbed him. You're out of your mind. No, I'm not. You're insane. No. No, I saw you do it. You dropped the knife and, and you ran out the door. I tried to stop you. Came in just a few minutes later. Right now. You murdering little idiot. Let's go! Mason, you've won! Alan just conceded the election! You're going to... You're going to go. You made it on a minute right there. So you see, Doctor, the evidence is really stacked against Les Burns. I and the others feel that he's absolutely innocent. Now, I asked you down here to see if there wasn't something you could do to help us prove Les is innocent and Claire's guilt. Because just as sure as my name is Hack Doyle, she's framed him. I agree with you 100%. I am positive that Mrs. Hanneman killed Stanley. But uh, because of her testimony and finding the knife in Les's hand when you arrived at the scene, the police could come to only one conclusion. Surely there's something you can do to help him. He's innocent. I know he is. Look, you were once connected with a big city police department. Then you must have run across cases of this sort. 
I know now that Claire Cummings is a nut if I ever saw one. Yes, you're right, Mr. Herrick. I'll at least have a try at it. I'm just as interested in finding Stanley's murderer as you are in proving Mr. Burns' innocence. Now, I have a plan that might break her down. Well, good morning, Dr. Clevenger. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? It's no pleasure for me, Mrs. Hanneman, I assure you. I just came to ask one question. Why did you kill Stanley Mason? What? <laughs> How ridiculous you are, Doctor. Am I? You see, I had a talk with Stanley last night concerning your betrothal and advised him against it. It's safe to assume that when he came to tell you there wouldn't be any marriage, you killed him in a fit of anger and then concocted a story to implicate Mr. Burns. It's the most absurd accusation I ever heard. You seem to forget that Les Burns' fingerprints were found on the knife and that he was seen standing with it in his hand. But please have all the facts, Doctor. Not all of them. All they need to convict Les Burns. Do you mind if I finish my column? No. Why, no. I suppose you'll tell the police I killed Stanley and give them that fantastic story to back up your accusations. It won't sound so fantastic to them, Mrs. Hanneman. I discovered one or two other flaws in your story. They'll laugh at you. It's insane, absurd. Oh, you're wrong. You see, I've spent my life delving into distorted minds like yours. I worked for the police for many years as a consulting psychiatrist. You sound more like a hypnotist. And I'm quite fed up with your insane theories. Now, Doctor. Looking for something, Hack? Police are on their way. Police? What for? Oh. I see the three of you dreamed this one up. Well, as long as you're going to have me arrested, you might as well read my last column. Go ahead, read it, Hack. Read it out loud. I killed Stanley Mason. I killed Carl Hanneman. I killed Blackie Talon. You didn't know about Blackie, did you? You hid that story on page five. Unsolved robbery and slaying. I killed Stanley Mason because he, he no, no longer, longer wanted, wanted to, to marry me. me. Stanley Mason was the top of the ladder for me. The top rung. I had money. And now I was going to have position. He was taking me to Washington with him. I could leave then without making the police suspicious. Clever of me, wasn't it? Why did you frame Les Burns? Why? Because he caught me with blood on my hands. Because at last even he had discarded me. I never loved any of them. You, Al, Hanneman, Mason. But Les, I, I wanted to hang on to him. He was of no use to me, but I couldn't let him go. Maybe I did love him. Hello. Miss Cummings? No, she's out. I'm glad you confessed, because you never could have gotten away with it much longer. I would have, but to per you, Dr. Clippinger. You with your slimy scientific snooping. As soon as you came in, I realized it was you who turned Stanley Mason against me. You sent him to his death just as much as I. Sit down, Claire. Why, but for you, I'd have everything I ever wanted in life. I hated you, because you were the first man who ever saw inside my mind. And I'm going to kill you. Let go of my arm!
You were a little late, Myrna. Well, it was probably better this way. I can scarcely believe it. A woman as beautiful as that. You didn't know her very well. None of us really know her very well. Even a good newspaper woman. 